today I like to check out a very special litter. Apparently we have a poor connection right now. Please leave a comment if you if you can see the live. Hey Thomas, how are you doing? Simon, hello, hello from Hamburg to Sweden. <clears throat> as usual, please, uh, as always, let me know from where you're watching. It's always fun to see who's watching, where you are from. Uh, and uh, in case you have ev any questions, hello to Florida. In case you have any questions, uh, please just uh, drop down a comment. It also helps me because uh, usually it's like when I'm live for one, about an hour, it's uh, like qu quite an exhausting uh, monologue for me. So, um, hello to Finland. So, uh, whatever you like to know, I thought today, um, so far we have never done this in the live, but uh, I thought it might be a good idea to also talk a bit out, uh, about genetics. So in case you have a genetic specific question, just let me know. I will uh, try the best to, uh, to explain what's going on. So hello to you, New York City. That's awesome. It's 9 a.m. In, in New York right now time for breakfast. It's uh, 3 p.m. here, so six hours ahead. Is there anyone watching from anyone watching uh, from Los Angeles already? Probably too early, I think so. Or you're still uh, still awake. Hello to UK. Fantastic. So, um, I said this before many, many times, then when it comes to, to breeding boars, um, I am a big fan of uh, multi-recessive combinations. And uh, I, can, I can explain a bit why. This uh, why I believe that this is like a, a very good idea. For example, let's pick out uh, a morph that you all know, um, like the motley. And uh, I, I have already done this. Um, this I, I told the story for uh, a quite uh, some time uh, because back in 2010 or whatever, I, maybe even earlier, we bought an albino motley. Simple albino motley, Carl albino motley, and um, it was a male, um, a baby, like half a year old, and back then we paid uh, like uh, seven and a half k for this animal, and uh, I believe when we were ready to produce, uh, or when we first produced uh, albino motleys. We sold one male for about a bit above 2k and um, and then like it went down uh, pretty pretty fast uh, because so many so many babies have been produced and this is like kind of um, the reason why I'm such a big fan of of uh, multi recessive combinations because uh, obviously when you have like um, an albino motley, for example, or a regular motley. It is so easy to produce uh, tons of, of motley. Um, and basically, of course, this is for all dominant or incomplete dominant traits. So this is always the same. Um, so you just need, basically, you just need a male um, and several females. And uh, in case you don't care, you produce like 
five liter and uh, and then you'll be like uh, super uh, annoyed because the babies are not selling um, and you have a high number of it and the only solution that you have for it is by lowering the price lowering the price lowering the price and yeah if there are enough people doing it um, that's what basically also happens with plain uh, labbies by the way um, it's the same same story uh, different shit same story <laughs> and um, no different story same shit so it's like when you are uh, working with a dominant and incomplete dominant uh, traits um, in my opinion the only solution is to get in more recessive morphs more recessive like color morphs so this is why for example we are um, we have produced our ghost 100% head vpi snow glow leopards um, this is why we started the habanero project um, in case you have like double or triple uh, recessive combinations that you want to produce it's super hard to to get even started uh, like for example here uh, we do have uh, this is a hypo leopard um, post head vpi female uh, in the background the, the grayish one is a vpi eclipse uh, indeed believe it or not um, and over here we do have uh, vpi 66 percent post head a leopard female so um, and those females they have pro been produced in 2020 and it uh, takes such a long time uh, to get ready to to have the animals in place to be able to even just produce a hundred like visual vpi a hundred percent head leopard and so on and so on or uh, like vpi sanglo um a hundred percent head leopard um, I get this this question a lot um, that oh yeah I, I would like to have a sub adult uh, uh, VPI Sanglo um, head leopard um, like yes I, I would also like to have one um, but yeah I, I don't I don't like the pos heads and uh, I, I do understand why <laughs> the, why you want to have a 100% head animal, uh, of course. Uh, who doesn't want to have everything like uh, guaranteed? But this is pretty much not um, how it works. This is not uh, how, how it's done when you try to start to produce such a, uh, a new combo. Um, then you have to first of course produce tons of 100 percent heads like what we have done with the uh, with the ghosts uh, we've been breeding an anery leopard to uh what was it anery leopard to a vpi snow glow thank you and um so this, this is what we have been done in the very first beginning. And then next step will be to breed uh, from those breedings further animals together to, to produce the first, hopefully the first visuals. And I like to show you some of our habanero. Uh, but the females are not that cooperative. In case you're wondering what a habanero is, uh, this is like a, a VPI, um, VPI Sanglo Leopard. And we have two females in here, sub added females. Let's see. Here. Here it is. The habaneros, they turn out to be as crazy 
as a hypoleopard, for example, you never get the same looking animal. All the animals are looking different. This one over here, for example, is a bit darker than this female here. I wanted to show you the coloration. Now we can have a bit of a, of a better look. Hey to South Africa, how are you doing? And of course, this is just like one female. Um, and they are also born in 2020, by the way. So I hope within the next years, we're gonna be able to uh, produce, as I said, the very first uh, heads, for example, with our Ghost 100% head VPI Snow Glow Leopard. Um, we have a Habanero male ready, waiting for one of those females. So in this case, we would be able to produce Habanero 100% head uh, anery. So this is like absolutely fantastic uh, result and uh, brings me closer to what I'm very much looking forward to. And this is like the VPI Snow Glow Leopard. So for example, when you watch this beauty here, just imagine the black dots kind of gonna remain, but uh, I'm picturing a white animal with nice black uh, dots all over the body. So this is, yeah. I like it. If it turns out uh, from, what I, uh, from what I think it will look like. Another example for multi, for multi um, recessive combinations are our Red Dragon lab Labyrinth, for example. So this here is a female. Female Red Dragon Labby. So it's a visual albino, visual Carl albino. In general, Red Dragon, um, only Carl albino bloods are called Red Dragon. So we are always talking about Carl albinos and it's also a visual blood. If you are not sure uh, what to look for or if you are working or if you have a red dragon, mostly a look in the eyes is already helping because they are going to be like pitch red. Um, is this a saying? pitch red. I only know like pitch black. When you have like a non-albino version of a, of a blood, then it's uh, like uh, you have pitch black eyes. So this is definitely something you can, you can look for. So let's have a look at, at your comments. Hey, Australia, that's new. That is crazy. Not sure if we've ever had an Australian here in our chat. It must be late at your place. South Africa is kind of far away, but in the end, it's uh, it's still like cheating. I believe you also have your time. You don't have even a time difference, right? It's also 3 p.m. We always kept our animals, our uh, our adults in uh, in cages. Uh, in fact, this is even uh, something that you are forced to do by law um, here in in Germany. So uh, you will not be able to keep uh, adult animals uh, in a rack system. Uh, I also do believe uh, that 
uh, in terms of uh, growth rate, um, that this is uh, definitely positive. Um, and I like it that you can like check out the animals permanently uh, without further disturbance, like opening a rack system or whatever. So um, yeah, all in all, uh, but it was never like uh, a chance on uh, trying out uh, huge rack systems. Um, and I, I have also no desire to do so. Hello to Grenada. It's awesome. Today we have lots of people checking in. That's fantastic. Plan on mixing blood into the VPI leopard, of course. Definitely. I mean, we produced uh, some VPI blood, some VPI sanglo blood. Here we do have one of the VPI bloods. They look so much different on the screen than in real. But those gonna be absolutely stunning for sure. And, and the blood, I truly believe that the blood will also uh, like uh, bring even more color into the Habanero project. So that's definitely something I'm looking for. VPI Hypo Blood. I, I always call them VPI Sun Dragon indeed. Um, I'm not sure um, if someone else names them differently, but in the end it's like sticking to what we know. There are already so many different names and, and I try to keep it as, as simple as possible to not uh, confuse uh, the people even more. Um, I mean... Since, since we started breeding, when I started breeding boars, uh, we were talking about um, hypos, crazy. They were albinos. And uh, some people were talking about how to picture how a VP, uh, how, not a VPI, how a sanglo would look like. So, um, and, and they were freaking out when the first sanglos were born. Um, and we are talking about plain. Carl Sanglos, um, and um, so so over the years, it's kind of been easy for me to keep up with with all the different new combination morphs and the different names. But when you start now, then you are fucked. <laughs> to be honest, so it's like for me, for example, I have I, I have no chance when it comes to to ball pythons, to corn snakes, or whatever, even. When it comes to sharp albino boa combinations, I'm out because it's like uh, so many people are coming up with new names. It's so hard to keep up and uh, I pretty much stopped trying. So uh, I'm focusing on what we are working with um, to at least be able to uh, understand what's going on and like picking the, the right names for it. So, yeah, let me know in the comments if you, um, if you are aware how VPI Sun Dragon or VPI Sanglo Blood, if they already have a different name. Until, until then, I'm going to keep uh, calling them VPI Sun Dragon. Okay. Checking out. Checking out the chat again. Uh, does the Spectre project come into this category? In what into what category? Um, please explain a bit more. I'm a huge fan of the Spectre project, by the way. So this is like one of the main reasons uh, what we're going to talk about today in this live. 
because we've had a huge surprise in our latest uh, Spectre litter. Uh, in the beginning I was kind of annoyed, um, but it turns out that uh, it's kind of the best thing uh, that could have happened. So uh, just a second. Today I'm all alone again, so... So here we are. The, these are the babies. And uh, they are from breeding a Hypo Head Spectre to IMG Hypo Jungle Head Spectre. They are born in, on August 13th, so, uh, 13, August 13th, and uh, you can already tell by the look at those two babies here that there is something going on that we have not been expecting. Well, we're getting to this in a moment. First I need some disinfection. So we do have some nice jungle in here, uh, nice IMG, um, visual VPI stuff, obviously, because we are talking about uh, Spectres. Um, Spectre are black eye anery and, um, and VPI. There's one super beautiful, crazy VPI sun glow beneath here. This is uh, uh, IMG. Here we do have uh, a nice hypo jungle. Probably also IMG animal. And because we have been breeding um, head spectre to head spectre, uh, all the babies that are non-visual are 66% POS heads. Um, so, but what is, what is the interesting part? Here, for example, you can see this is a nice um, ghost devil. So, ghost devil is, hey, Romania, how are you doing? Um, so, a ghost devil is an IMG... Black eye anery hypo. So this beauty here, and look at the eyes. This is why they are called black eye anery, um, because the eyes are pitch black. Um, over here, on the other side, we do have a ghost. Um, probably IMG ghost, but look at the eyes. We are working with IMG Colombians. Uh, but in this case, it's a very good question. Probably it's also the IMG, uh, Colombian IMG uh, stuff because IMG Leopard is something completely different. This is, cannot be compared to uh, a dominant IMG trade. Um, and we bought Ghost Devils uh, back then. So, however, back to the point. Look at the eyes of this ghost, and uh, you see this is not uh, a black eye anery. So we have been really going crazy how this uh, was even possible, but in the end the explanation is uh, quite simple. Uh, we have been producing, uh, we have been breeding in the very first times a ghost devil to a uh, VPI jungle and uh, the VPI jungle we produced ourselves um, and we used triple head VPI snow glow females to produce the uh, uh, VPI jungle. So in fact they have been 50% pos head anery type 1 and uh, it turns out that this litter here 
is not only from breeding a hypo head specter to an IMG hypo jungle head specter, it's hypo head specter head anery type 1 to IMG hypo jungle head specter head anery type 1. So as I said in the very first beginning, I was really pissed <laughs> that, um, that those two been mixed together. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we have some IMG Snow Glow, VPI Snow Glow type, also so like type 1 VPI Snow Glow uh, in this litter. So, and to be honest, we have been trying for years to produce IMG VPI Snow Glow. So, I kind of uh, feel okay with it now. Um, especially because it is so simple to identify the visuals. So you don't have to uh, be afraid that uh, you uh, gonna get an anery type 1 uh, instead of a black eye anery. Uh, this cannot happen because they, the visuals are so different. And um, like this one here, this is a, a nice ghost devil jungle. Posthead VPI. And here is the IMG snow glow I've been talking about. And um, I thought that um, that the, the specter in here is an IMG hypo. Um, ah, IMG hypo jungle specter. Uh, but that's not the case. Um, so this is like a super nice and super plain um, specter. Just a second. It's really more easy uh, to do this with someone else who can help. Like here, here she is. Or he or whatever. Just a second. This is such a nice, beautiful animal. And very light, light white, like really snow white. The pattern is also very beautiful. Once again, here you can see the difference. This is a type one uh, anery ghost. And here you have a black eye anery ghost, probably IMG as well. The only downside here is that uh, in case you're talking about non-visual -vis animals, um, they are uh, only pos head, like pos head, black eye anery, pos head VPI or whatever uh, the visual or the the animal looks like, and um, yeah, this is this is like uh, really the downside. Um, but that's also like what I explained when you start producing such combinations, you do not have visual specter or hypo specter to work with straight away. So. This is a real crazy animal right here. Also looks a bit like a paradox to me. Um, I did not lose an animal during the life. Yeah, sometimes they like 
this is what it looks like when you're doing a live alone. Um, it's a bit challenging, but um, nothing that I'm not uh, used to work with. Usually this can even be more crazy if you have like uh, 13 animals or more in a, in a tub, then it, it gets really crazy. So, but it's about time to bring them back for sure. And we can also have a look later on. But of course, this also happened before, like every now and then it can happen that you are uh, kind of losing um, a baby. Um, the best idea is if this happens, then you should be go back in your snake room when it's dark. So this is, uh, this is the best um, advice that I can give to you. Uh, they will be hiding somewhere uh, and during nighttime they will be coming out. I have no clue how the how the edit's gonna look like. To be honest, of the specters, um, I have seen uh, some specters that have been um, very dark. Um, but as it's always the case, like um, sometimes uh, you have very dark animals uh, from a litter or even litter mates, even siblings, are uh, going to have a, a very different uh, appearance. And um, I believe that this is kind of the same uh, for Spectre, Hyperspectre or whatever, to, to lighten things up. Um, I'm a big fan of having Hypo in it. Um, so this is like also why the Habanero are so much more colorful um, than if you have a VPI Leopard, for example. VPI Leopard mostly are, um, in my opinion, to be able to produce like 100% heads, producing habaneros, etc. So they are more like to continue to, to get started with the breeding and have 100% head visuals. This is what um, what I feel um, VPI leopards are for. Uh, they definitely have the tendency to darken up um, a lot. Uh, but we also, we can check it out uh, later. Uh, we also have VPI Aztec leopards uh, or not leopards, but we have one uh, female VPI Aztec leopard. And the color that she got um, now is so beautiful. Um, so I'm very, very happy with this result because I was expecting completely dark animals. So here is another beauty I like to show off. So you have, you can see the difference. This is uh, an IMG jungle hyperspectre so the img is doing a lot and uh, already you can tell by looking at the at the sides that she's she's already like uh, like grayish um so i very much like this animal how it looks like right now but i'm also uh, kind of Curious, let's say curious. I was about to say scared, but uh, let's say I'm kind of curious um, how she gonna look like in about uh, two years because it can happen that uh, she gonna be pitch black. And uh, but I do hope that enough pattern will remain like light pattern going through, so like being an extra nice black devil for example.
black devil on steroids, for example. Here is a sibling. Okay, he's in, in super deep shed. You can see the eyes are completely milky. So this, we leave her alone. Here are some of the of the red dragon litter, uh, so red dragon babies that we produced this year, by the way. This one is already sold, but we do have like a few animals here that are um, that are still available. So, yeah, in case you you are looking forward to to have a nice red dragon project or a nice boost, just just let me know. Okay. This here is a really dark. Sun Dragon. Also a bit of a weirdo. Usually they do not have uh, that much pattern left, but uh, by looking at the eyes, um, you can see that this one is definitely a Sun Dragon. And over here, we have one of our Sanglo Motley Labbies, 100% head blood. Only five animals in this litter, and uh, the babies are from breeding a sun dragon to a motley labby head albino um, head blood. Here's the second one. I know that there are quite some people uh, who are not a big fan of mixing Labby and Motley, but as you can see, this combination, I very much like it, especially when you have Hypo in it as well. You have pop eyes from time to time when you are working with um with t minus albinos um this this is the case from time to time and uh if you are really able to outbreed it um i mean obviously no one at least i hope so no one is working with uh animals that had have pop eyes and like removing the eyes and continue breeding with them. This is like a, a crazy ass idea. If it can be fully avoided, uh, that's a very good question. We do not have them uh, in our Red Dragon projects. Um, and in the end, we pretty much reduced uh, like most of our uh, Carl Albino projects, I'm not sure if we even have combinations going on not containing blood as well. Um, since we are focusing so much on the VPIT Plus stuff and all the combinations with it and the Black Devil and uh, like all those combos and the whole uh, labbies. Um, yeah, I, I truly, um, we, we pretty much reduced like all other uh, car stuff now that I'm thinking about it. This Judy right here is a male, VPI, Labby, 100% head enery. This boy gonna be ready to breed next year. 
but this is not the breeder for me. So this is one of the of the available animals. Let me let me check the chat real quick. Is it hard to get them started? I'm not sure. It would be cool if uh, Black Eye Henry helps to reduce the, the yellowish uh, in, in the VPIs. Um, but I also believe that, for example, like the VPI Snow Glue, um, like the, let's call it the purple strain that, that uh, we are working with, or the, what is it? The black and white uh, face VPI Snow stuff um, that those will also um, will not have that intense yellow um, when they mature I'm, I'm very sure about it so I believe if it's hard to get the specter started um, so far from what we have seen they are feeding perfectly so we also have uh, really good experiences with our Black Devil, uh, for example. Um, our Black Devil, they are eating like machines. It's also like combinations with Motley, Key West. It's, they are really, really strong feeders. Um, you, I barely have any problems uh, with them. Talking about Black Devil. This is a male that we hope to start breeding with next year. But he's also about to, to shed. You can see a bit of the iridescence over here. Yeah, there are definitely so many uh, multiple recessive combinations uh, that I um, uh, like to work with. If we are talking about Carl albinos, like there is one more project that we we like to continue working with and this is uh, the Labby Snows and Labby Moonglows. We do have some really nice um, Labby 100% had Carl Snow uh, animals and um, let me have a look. Like this is one of them. The pattern on those animals turns out to be really spectacular. And here's another one. So imagine to have uh, an Enery type 1 ghost, Labbies. Um, had Carl Albino having moon glow labbies, snow labbies. Yeah, the the labby, the labby had moon glows. We have like uh, a very few animals uh, left available. Um, they also been produced in uh, two thousand and twenty one. Um, so they they are nice. They started nice, uh, they already have a nice size to them and I believe we might have like three animals like that left available. Okay. I am crazy for labbies. I'm, I'm so crazy for labbies. This is like for me because I'm also such a big fan of the of the uh, 
real jungle pattern. Like for example, we do have those hypo jungle head blood uh, VPI animals here from uh, this year as well. And uh, I mean, like jungle and Levy, they are all producing such a nice pattern. And of, of course, they are also influencing nice, very nicely on the, um, on the color. So um, I'm, I'm all about levies. But in my opinion, as I said, if you like to start with the levies now, at least you should aim to get um, a double recessive animal. That's, of course, it's just my opinion. You can let me know what you think. No, these are on permanent heat. So uh, this is like the only, well, basically what we are doing here is that we heat the whole room is heated up to 27 degrees uh, Celsius, of course. <laughs> and um, the heat mats, they are not that uh, hot at all. Um, they provide heat and of course they are also increasing the temperature within the cages. Um, but... Uh, they are never used on a regular basis. Um, males, like maybe in the winter time when they just had uh, a rat, they might use uh, the heat mat. Um, it is a strong indication that you are having a pregnant female when she uses the heat mat. So this is like what we discovered, that uh, like only pregnant females are really frequently using it like on and off uh, switching from heat mat to hiding place back to heat mat and um, yeah but we like to provide it uh, so in case they feel that they uh, need some some uh, some more uh, heat they can use it you are in florida i'm jealous I'm watching lots of videos uh, from the Everglades. Um, I mean, in the end, it's also like crazy sad what's going on with all those invasive species. But it's uh, also impressive what, how many different species you already have like established. I, I was not aware of it that I saw that you even have tokis, um, like gecko gecko. I'm not sure how how to pronounce it in English but uh, I used uh, I've been to Thailand once with my wife and uh, it's awesome to have the sound of these uh, kiko, kiko. and it's like uh, we I was um, running around uh, in the middle of the night uh, with with uh, Jesus I'm missing uh, lots of vocabularies today. So I was running around and, and checking for the geckos and checking for snakes and, and all this stuff. So, I mean, of course, they are, uh, they are native to Thailand, but that you even have it in the glades, um, that, is, that is crazy. So it's not only the Burmese uh, pythons, uh, so it's also like so many other lizard stuff, gecko stuff that... Uh, it's it's a crazy list of of invasive uh, animals that that uh, established that are established now in in the in the glades crazy but also i would really like to go there uh, and check check all that stuff myself that's for sure even anaconda yeah this is like this is wild. In the end, that's kind of the same challenges that uh, the guys in Australia are facing. Um, like, I mean, there are na invasive species all over, all over the world. Sometimes they are even so established that you believe that it's like the dingo uh, in Australia, um, that you can't even believe that this is... Uh, in an invasive species. It's also like, uh, for example, here in Germany or in, in 
uh, when it comes to the North Sea coast. Um, I grew up collecting uh, razor clams and uh, it was crazy when I found out that even the razor clams are an invasive species. They've been brought from the US uh, to, to the North Sea. So, and uh, here in Northern Germany, we have a crazy example uh, for invasive species. There was a farmer who used to have like uh, emus, um, like the smaller type of uh, ostriches. Um, and uh, somehow a whole group escaped. And now we have a, a established population because they, they are protected. You're not able to catch them or hunt them or whatever. And now we have a, an established population of emus in Northern Germany. So that's like, yeah. And they are feeding on the crops of the farmers. So they are a big fan of emus. Okay. So... Any further questions? Like, yeah, Felsumer, Felsumer Madagascariensis Grandis, right? The, the uh, day geckos. Um, I've seen them that even the, the Grandis um, are established in the, in the glades now. So it's like, yeah, it's kind of having a, a, an open uh, pet shop over there. Uh, that's like all the species that you're used to see in a pet shop. Yeah, this is unbelievable. That if they are really moving that far north. And I also believe that it is pretty much impossible um, to, uh, to have a solution for this. Uh, even when you stop now, I don't believe that you can get all of them out of the, out of the swamps. All right, guys. Any further questions? It's close to an hour once again, and I'm halfway back home to my family. Today is a seafood dinner. I'm very much looking forward to this, so my next task is preparing everything in the kitchen. All right. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for joining in and uh, see you all hopefully next week uh, with our next week with our next live stream. And um, as usual, in case you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. Like 50% of the people that are watching are not subscribed. And this is a no-no. So... Uh, thanks a lot. Keep sharing the videos. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And uh, see you very, very soon. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your animals. And take care. Bye-bye.